Hey there, hope you're having a wonderful day. In this video, we're going to cover pointers in C++. So pointers can be confusing for those new to C++. And before we go on, let's talk about what variables are. So in C++, variables are used to store the value. So they don't point to values, they don't reference values, they store the values. So here you can see I have two variables, savings and savings2. So let's say savings represents the amount of money you have in your bank account. So this variable has the value 10,000. And when I do savings2 and I assign it savings, you might think that it's also referencing the same 10,000. But actually what's happening is we are making a copy and we are storing that copy in savings2. So if I do savings2 plus equal 5,000 and I print out the values, you'll see that only savings2 has changed. So let's save and run the program. And you can see we have 10,000 and 15,000. Now this is where pointers come in. So with a pointer, we can reference an object. So here you can see we have savings and I want to change this savings to, to a pointer. So to do so, I will do int star or asterisk and you can see we have an error here, and that is because a pointer to an integer cannot be assigned a value of integer. Instead, we need the memory address of where this 10,000 is stored. So to get the memory address, you would do ampersand in front of the value. So here we have savings2, which is a pointer to an integer, and it is referencing the address of savings. And just to make it clear that it's a pointer, let's rename this variable. So I'm going to call it savings pointer. And in C++, there are many ways to name a pointer. So you can say P savings. So the P stands for pointer. You can also say pointer savings. So it's a pointer to savings. Or you can also do savings underscore pointer like so. Or you can do savings pointer like I did here. And there are other ways to do it. But here I'm just going to do it this way with camel case. And PTR is a common acronym used for the word pointer. So let's change these. Okay, so now if I save and run the program, let's see what happens. And you can see we get 10,000 and we get this. This is the memory address. So when we are doing savings pointer plus equal 5,000, we are adding 5,000 to the memory address, which we should not be doing. So first, let's take care of this value. If you want to print out the value being referenced, you need to dereference the pointer. And to dereference, we would use the asterisk in front of the pointer variable. So now what we have is savings pointer is a pointer to an integer and it is referencing the address of this integer savings. And then we are printing this out. So we want the value at the memory address. Therefore, we dereference it using the asterisk. So now let's save and run the program. And you can see we get 10,000, but only one value gets printed. And that is because we have an error here. We are changing the memory address and adding 5,000 to it. But instead of doing that, we should be adding 5,000 to the value being stored at the memory address. So to do so, we would dereference the pointer and then add 5,000. So now if I save and run the program. You can see we get 15,000 and 15,000. That is because both savings and saving pointers are referencing the same memory location. So if I do over here, if I write savings plus equal 20,000, let's save and run the program. You can see we get 35,000 for both, okay? So with pointers, we can reference a memory address location and modify the value stored at that memory address location. Okay, so that is pointers. All right, so let's go over another example. And here you can see we have a vector of courses and we have chemistry, physics, and calculus. And then we have courses too, and we are assigning it courses. Now this might look like we're copying a reference to courses with courses two, and that is actually the case if you were to do so in Python or Java. But remember in C++, variables do not point to objects, they store the objects. So if I do courses two dot pushback French, and I want to add French to the course, and then I iterate through both vectors and print out the values, let's see what happens. And as you can see, only the second variable shows French in the vector. And again, that is because when we assign a variable to another one, we are making a copy of the object. So if you want to make changes to courses using another variable, we would have to use a pointer. So to create a pointer to a vector strings, all we need to do is add an asterisk. And then let's change the variable name to be more specific. So I'm going to do courses pointer. 
And again, you can see we have this squiggle. So we need to reference the memory address of this vector, not the vector itself. So we add an ampersand. That way we can get the memory address. And of course, let's change the variables here. So this is courses pointer and down here as well and down here as well. Okay. Now you might notice we have an error here and that is because we are trying to access the pushback method of the vector through the pointer. And we cannot do this because again, the courses pointer is pointing to a memory address location. So we need to dereference the pointer. And now if I dereference the pointer, you can see we still get a squiggle. And this is telling us that there is an error. So even though we dereference the pointer, we are still unable to use the pushback method. And the reason is because of the order of operation. This dot operator happens before this dereference operator. So we are trying to call the method and then dereference. Instead, we should do the other way around. So to change the order of operations, I will add a parenthesis here. And now you can see the squiggle goes away. And I need to do the same here. So I can't access the size method from a memory address location. I need to dereference. And of course, because of the order of operations, I need to add a parenthesis here. And over here as well, we cannot get the value at an index of a memory address location. So let's dereference this. And of course, because of order of operations, the brackets have a higher priority than the asterisk. So we're going to change this by adding a parenthesis here. And there you go. All right, now let's save and run the program. And as you can see, we get the same result. And that is because unlike with courses two, where we make a copy of the vector, the courses pointer point directly to the memory address of courses. And we can make changes to this vector using both variables courses and the courses pointer. Okay. Now, one more thing I want to add here is having to add parentheses every time can be a bit tedious. So in C++, there is another operator called the arrow operator. And basically we can condense parentheses asterisk dot, and we can change this to just an arrow. So instead of writing parentheses dereference with an asterisk like here, I can get rid of this. And instead of putting the dot, I can just use an arrow. And I can do the same with sizes. So here I can get rid of the parentheses and asterisk and the dot as well. And I can do this. So now if I save and run the program, you can see we get the same exact results. And you might be wondering why I didn't make the change on this line. And that is because there is no dot here. So this only works if there's the parentheses and asterisk together, which we have here and the dot. So if I try to do courses pointer, like so, this is saying courses pointer dot at index i. And this does not work. If you want to use the arrow operator for this case, which I don't recommend, you would have to call the method associated with the index operator. So it'd be something like this courses pointer arrow operator brackets, and then you would pass in i like so. All right, so now if I save and run the program, you can see we get the same thing if we were to use the arrow operator. And I don't recommend doing this, of course, because it's more to type. So just do it this way. And the syntax might be confusing to you for now, but we'll go over the syntax when we eventually cover object-oriented programming in C++. All right, so that's it for pointers. Hopefully you understand how pointers work and how we can reference memory addresses and change the values at those memory addresses. And in the next few videos, we're going to continue talking about pointers and references. But uh, yeah, that's it for this video. And if you found this video helpful, make sure you give this video a like. If you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. And if you want to stay up to date on more C++ tutorials, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.